sector. Uh, and I think, Minister, there are genuine concerns out there in relation to uh, the operation and the viability of the sub-post office uh, network. I had a phone call just before I came into this meeting in relation to another uh, sub-post office, Capitagal Post Office uh, in County Galway, where they've been given a month uh, stay of execution there following the passing uh, of the uh, post uh, mistress in that particular uh, post office. And I think it's just not good enough that uh, the guillotine automatically hangs over any uh, sub-post office as soon as the uh, postmaster or postmistress uh, happens uh, to pass away. But I think th there's a far greater merit uh, for the retention of the sub-post office network uh, that has been articulated to date, uh, and that is in the whole area of fraud, and it has been mentioned by previous speakers uh, here. You, through the work that's done and tremendous work that's done uh, by my constituents in Carrick and Shannon in the control section. And, sorry? Oh, yeah, oh, I am very aware of it, yes. Thank you. Uh, 332 million euro uh, in uh, control savings that was uh, collected uh, last year or calculated last year based on the actions of that particular section of the department. And they do tremendous work. But it would be interesting, Minister, to actually look at the level and frequency of fraud in relation to payments that are collected uh, through electronic means and through the uh, uh, bank, uh, payments that are collected in the major post offices and payments that are collected in sub-post offices. And I would suspect, Minister, any analysis of that, you'd very quickly find out uh, that there's far less uh, fraud taking place uh, in payments that are collected from sub-post offices uh, because the postmasters or postmistress knows the, the individuals that are coming in uh, collecting uh, those particular payments uh, and you know with such a focus on fraud and rightly so that there should be a focus on fraud I think the sub-post office network has an important role to play one that has been ignored up to now uh, and the reality is that uh, person to person payments were reintroduced by your predecessor, uh, Minister Hannafin, because of the level of fraud that was uh, being perpetrated on the uh, electronic, solely electronic payment uh, system. The other thing that is ignored, uh, and I think could help to improve efficiencies, not only in your own department, but other government departments, and that is, as you know, Minister, uh, it's far more efficient to actually process an application that's submitted online. Uh, and I know that many uh, government agencies now are trying to incentivise people to submit their applications online, not just the Revenue Commissioners, but the Department of Agriculture, uh, many government departments, uh, the um, driving licences and so forth. Uh, and there is a problem with a certain cohort of people that are not able to use those online systems. But I would suspect in relation to social welfare, there is still a considerable and probably the vast majority of applications are still going in uh, in hard copy. Now, if you actually gave the uh, uh, postmasters and postmistresses a role in actually assisting with submitting those particular applications online, it would actually streamline and speed up the processing of those applications uh, within the department. It would ensure that all of the required documentation is provided day one, less need to, to follow up queries. And by giving uh, the postmasters and postmistresses a, a direct role uh, in relation to that. It makes it far more difficult uh, for any other operator out there to, to directly uh, compete with that local post office network in providing that service. And this comes to the point that the excuse is being made, well, because of EU competition rules, we have to open it up uh, to everyone. You could set uh, very simple criteria which I think would actually benefit the delivery of the service, that you have to have a minimum number of outlets, that it's not just in the local towns, but that you actually service rural communities as well. And there are many of the major retailers that won't be able to compete uh, on that level in relation to it, that they have to be able to uh, provide an area to assist people in actually filling out forms and assisting with them with submitting them online. There are many operators out there that won't be able uh, to deal with that. And I think. Uh, 
another issue that, that, that is ignored uh, is the fact that postmasters uh, have to sign the Official Secrets Act. Uh, and many of these other service providers that are being proposed at the moment will not have to do that. Now, you're talking about a lot of very personal, uh, private information. People don't necessarily want it to be known that they're in receipt of a social assistance payment. And based on the level of social assistance payment that they're in receipt of, you can very quickly calculate uh, the other income that that particular individual uh, has. Uh, you know, you and I think that that issue needs to be taken into account in relation to any provision that's made regarding the, the, the rollout uh, of uh, payments collection to other service providers. And these issues, I think, have been ignored uh, to a great extent by your department to date. And I would ask you and urge you, Minister, to reconsider those and consider the amendment that has been put forward here. Thank you.